What is the solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? I'm quite sure I do not know, being neither Israeli-Palestinian nor Palestinian myself. However, I have visited Israel, I have visited the West Bank, and um, the situation there frightens me and it sickens me, and I despise the, um, the fences, the apartheid-style regime of Israel towards uh, Palestine and um, I think that probably the best solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was for the Balfour Declaration to have never happened in the first place, for Zionism to never have been supported in the first place and for this colonialist and Jewish nationalist attitude to have never been allowed to um, prevail in the United Kingdom, obviously my own country, and um, thereby convincing our politicians at the time that they should be supported in their endeavour to go to Palestine and sequester territory for themselves with British military support and um, establish a Jewish state there. And um, was it uh, Kane Weitzman or someone who said that he wanted to make um, Palestine as Jewish as England is English and um, the thing about England back then back in the 1920s or so it was or a little bit earlier than that I think um, England was already well not really that multicultural but getting there towards multiculturalism we've always been multicultural in Britain um, there's no such thing as like England being English not really I mean my name Cottle that's French um, from, uh, from being French, it's Italian. The name Cotar, Cotton, Cotton, that's uh, ultimately Egyptian actually, but that's sort of beside the point. And it sort of just goes into, you know, yet more evidence of people just moving around Europe and the Middle East and um, arriving on British shores from afar. And there are probably Cotas coming over here in the Roman period as well. And, Cotels, which is what my name comes from, coming here along with the Norman conquests and um, yeah, on that level that we've been conquering people for a very long time and it's not necessarily something to be proud of or not really something to be proud of um, and building empires and all this sort of thing and going and taking the lands of other people and supposedly improving those areas and whatnot. And I think um, just a little bit of that probably bled into the Jewish populations of Europe in the latter 19th, in the late 19th century, the early 20th century, is giving rise to the Zionist movement, which then decided they wanted to sequester Palestine. Um, I think we should never have supported them in that endeavour. It was only ever going to lead to problems. It clearly has led to problems. But what is the solution now? The solution now is what? To tell all the Jews to leave Israel and pack up and go home? Like, I don't think that is necessarily the solution. I think the solution is a one-state solution. I think it's a full integration of Israel with Palestine. You call it Israel-Palestine, if you really must, or um, call it something else. Call it something, uh, the, um, the neutral Palestinian territory, the neutral zone of the Middle East. You know, you've got to use your imagination with this sort of stuff. Um, or like, yeah, a one-state solution with no fences, nothing at all. Um, Arabic on the signs along with Hebrew on the signs and you know they have that anyway as I recall in, in Israel they have that um, but yeah I it's a tragedy a travesty um, I don't know what what else needs to be in place from an infrastructural or you know government level like everyone ha having the same citizenship the same rights the same yeah educations but um it's in the same, you know, sort of welfare and so on systems being integrated and all that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's it's a very difficult situation. It's something that should never have happened in the first place, and um, it shouldn't be allowed to continue now. On a level, it's it's very understandable to see where the Palestinians are coming from, and you know, you do ca can almost sympathise with Hamas. 
um, since their territories have been under occupation, under occupation, and it really is an Israeli occupation, by the way, for so very long. Um, but the murdering of innocent women and children, though, is like, well, it, it is indefensible. It's still not a thing to defend, even after what everything that's gone before all this 70 years of history or even longer really um i yeah what, what it should be is a secular uh westernized nation state with no religious iconography no religious leanings no religious iconography on the flags or anything like that no particular religious institutions that operate as part of the state, no national religion, and should, yeah, there should be a very firm divide between church and state within the structure of whatever government should replace that system. So, you know, there should be no rabbinical courts and all this sort of stuff that's, that's completely abhorrent. Um, there should be no uh, Jewish fanatics ordering young Jewish men and women with machine guns to go and massacre Palestinian populations or drive them out of their homes and force them to become refugees in their own country and um, starve them and make them die of thirst in the deserts and this sort of thing. Well, that absolutely shouldn't be going on, obviously. Is it genocide? A lot of people seem to think it is genocide or it's intent is genocidal. Um, is there good and bad on both sides? There usually is. Um, do both sides have a point? So I have to say the Palestinians have more of a point than the Israelis do. That's ultimately my opinion, since they were there first, of course. They were there before the Zionists showed up. They were there for millennia before, you know, the Zionists showed up. There's um, Jewish populations in Iran, and in Syria and Egypt and Ethiopia, um, albeit rather small ones, and they seem to get along fine in those countries and that sort of that that those are ancient parts of their societies. Like I said, not many Jewish people in those parts of the world, but nonetheless, I think they manage to coexist peacefully with their neighbours. Do they not? And um, it's. Yeah, it's um, it's a reactionary and colonialist and nationalist movement on the part of the Jewish people, um, on the part of certain Jewish people, really, on the Zionist part. And my experience of going to Israel, um, they harassed me and harangued me and kept me waiting a, a very long time at the airport because they thought, like, I don't know, they were vetting people for being suspect or terrorists or something like that and it just struck me as the most paranoid uh you know oppressive sort of place and i didn't have a very good time in israel at all when i went there and um but you know my experience with jewish people has been lovely I well loads of my favorite comics are jewish loads of my favorite scientists and writers are Jewish, so I'm not going to go slagging off the Jewish people entire, but, um, why well, couldn't? But it, this situation, well, really, the people to slag off are my own people, aren't they? The British for allowing it to happen. <laughs> we shouldn't have let that happen. It's just, it was um, misguided, it was pandering, it was, um, a poor example of positive discrimination unleashing atrocity and yeah it should never have been allowed to happen in the first place whereas you know there's no um internecine conflicts between jews and christians particularly in the united states um or in britain or there's no internecine conflict particularly between jews and muslims in the united kingdom but um there seems to be this hell of a problem and it literally is hell there or seemingly hell in the west bank and in gaza um in this part of the world and it absolutely needs to come to a fucking hole and i, th I think this israel hamas conflict that we have now like 
this needs to be the point, the ultimate turning point. And we finally say enough is enough and do the best thing for both sides, establish a secular nation state there that is not a Jewish state. And I think that's probably about the rub of things.